I did talk to Shane Douglas this week. Uh, we had a two-hour phone conversation, um, despite 42,000 text messages. And I mentioned, I don't know if I mentioned it or he mentioned the Flair interview came up in, in the conversation. I sent it to him too. So okay. So it came up and uh he had uh, he had said something. I said, Oh, we talked about it on the podcast this week. And um, and he's like, Yeah, he goes, uh he goes, What did you see? And I said, I saw Flair and Conrad. And I didn't see yours, meaning Shane's interview with James. I said, but I saw Flair and Conrad. And I said, um, you know, why did you care so much if he drinks? Because I basically on the show, I had said, like, like, what does Shane care if he drinks? We all know Flair likes to party. Remember, I, I said that. I said, mm -hmm. it's nobody's business what somebody does in their spare time. Well, his answer was because the guy, I forget if he said it was his nephew or his cousin, that drove Flair to the airport, he specifically said this, was Shane's ride. So Shane was on early in the night, and the kid said to Shane, do you mind if I drop Rick off at the airport and I'll be back for you? And Shane said, yeah, no problem. Well, this was early in the night. The ring was getting broke down, and Shane was still sitting there waiting for the ride to come back. So that's why. He was hot. And we did not say that on the show. No. So now I understand where the heat was and why he got pissed if he went to 10 bars. Right. That It makes sense now. So I was just like, you know, I said, I really wasn't shitting on you, but I was just like, what does Shane care if he drinks? And he goes, I don't. He goes, yeah. I don't care if he drinks. He goes, but when I'm waiting there for my ride to get back to my room and he's never coming... And then the rings being torn down. And I was like, I don't know, first or second match or whatever he was. He goes, I just sat there and waited and waited and waited. And they were never coming. Like, the kid was never coming back. So there, there's the heat right there. It wasn't because Rick was out drinking. It was because that was his ride for the evening. Right. And it was, like, just ridiculous that he had to sit there for hours upon hours. Yes. On it. He waited and waited and waited and, and then it clicked. And I was just like, man, I said, you know, we left that out because that wasn't, we didn't, well, we didn't watch yours. the other video. Right. right. I said, we didn't listen to your video. We just pulled up Ric Flair's video and, uh, and he, again, complimentary. He goes, I don't want anything to happen to the guy. Right. You no, know? he goes, but he goes, yes, he was going to the airport. And yes, the guys that drove him said they had to stop at every bar along the way. That's what he said. So I was just like, okay, I get it. So who do you believe? I don't know. I'm friends with Shane, so I'm going to side with Shane. But it makes perfectly good sense now why he was so hot. So, And then based off of hearing that and then hearing Flair, how do we feel about Flair throwing in his extra couple of two cents about Shane? I mean, he always has to do that. <laughs> I don't like when people just go, oh, have you been to Target lately? Did you go to Target? Target this? Listen, I would rather see somebody who was in the business working a decent job than become a crackhead or a strung out drug addict, alcoholic, nowhere to live, not supporting their family. It's a job. You know, whether you work at Target, whether you're a garbage man, whether you're a CEO of a company, it's a decent living. You're making money and you're making it honestly. So anybody who says stuff like that, it's just like, who cares? What do you do for a living? But how do you think people take it when they hear Flair, somebody like Flair say that? But the, even if uh, it was, area? it's a job. Right, exactly. It's better than being a deadbeat who doesn't pay yeah, bills and take care of their kids right. and their family and like, I, I'm so, when I see comments like that, I'm like, oh, screw you, man. Like, it, it's so old and it's such a just stupid, they're trying to be funny. It's not funny, you know? And I guess when Flair said it, it's like a fall from grace. You know, here he was, ECW heavyweight champion for years, the man in the company, blah, blah, blah. Now he works at Target. It's like, okay maybe he did work at target and now he doesn't and he's still in the business and he's making a decent living. But you know, if he was working at target now and wasn't in the business, 
he'd still be one of my best friends. I would still talk to him all the time. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't mm -hmm. change who the person is. And I just, I don't like those little dings. So, you know, Flair is blessed to have the career that he had and that he stayed at this level into his 70s. Like, he's yeah. that's a good career. Like, he's oh, very absolutely. lucky. Not many people can say that. You know, and there's a lot of us that are still in the business that know our role. I don't try to compare myself to these 30 year old little girls that are running around. You know, I'm not putting pictures up on my IG or my Twitter saying, hey, bitch, come at me. I still got one more in the can, blah, 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 blah. I'm not trying to start stuff up. I mean, I know where my place is in this business. I'm just happy to still have fans who care about me and to still make towns and to do this podcast and to be requested on cameo for me, 30 years later at 50 years old, I think that's pretty damn good, you know, and I'm not looking to get a second wind to, you know, to get that big TV contract to be on television. I'm not chasing that carrot. That's long gone for me. I couldn't care less. And that's the God honest truth. And my friends know that about me. I work when I want to work. I love staying home with my family. If I can make the money staying home and never being seen again, I would totally do it. Because I hate leaving my kids. You know that. You said it over and over for years. Absolutely. I hate leaving the house. But, you know, some of these conventions pay really well. So, it, it, and it does give me a little bit of a break and I get to see my friends and hang out and, and make some money. My Disney trip, I paid for it. You know, that made me feel good. I'm contributing. I'm doing something for my family. But I'm not sitting here chomping at the bit to, to get back into mainstream and, and to get a contract and, and all this stuff. I, I just, I know where my my placement is in the business and, and I'm fine where I am. I think Shane's the same way. And we're just, we always talk about it. We're just grateful that we have our health and that we're able to do this kind of stuff and we're able to do it together as a group. Right. And we're, we're extremely blessed in that aspect. So, uh, you know, uh, all these little digs and stuff like that, it's like, get over it. I'm done. Yeah.